of Gamel Facebook Live. My name is Jason Dean. And I'm Lisa Rogers. And we're with Rocky Mountain Electric Quilters based in Sandy, Utah. We are the dealers for Utah, Colorado, Nevada, and we just love being a part of the Gamel family. And today we're going to be talking about how the Toa Bobbin Case Tension Gauge can simplify your tension problems. So, for those that don't know, this is the Toa Gauge right here, or the Toa, yeah, the Toa Gauge. And so the way it works is you're going to want to get a fully, bound, fully wound bobbin, okay? You're going to get best results with a fully wound bobbin. Um, and what you're going to do is go ahead and put it into, <laughs> so I can get out of that spring. Go ahead and get your fully wound bobbin and put it into your bobbin case. The trick I like to, to do to make sure I get my bobbin in correctly is make sure you have a nine. So when you look at it, you're going to have the nine with the thread. It's going to always get your bobbin in correctly and you'll see it spin clockwise. So come on in. We're going to get this, put this in, put the bobbin in, go through the slot around and under that spring. And now if I pull it, it spins clockwise. All right. So now that it's in, locate the notch here in the edge. Okay, and that notch is going to go right into the groove on the Toa gauge. So we're going to get that in, and when you push it on the way, you're going to hear the click, and that's how you know you have it incorrectly. Then from here, you're going to go under the first wheel, and then up and over around the other wheel, and you can see it's moving that gauge for me. From here, go around the post, and then pull it straight out. Don't pull it into this groove here, otherwise it's going to cut your thread. But you should go ahead and hover it over it. All right. Now the trick here is you're going to want to give it nice, long, even, medium pulls. Don't go crazy with it. Just nice, medium pulls. And do it about two or three times so you can get an average number. Okay, so I'm going to pull this. All right. So right now, I'm about 210. Now, Lisa, what does your machine like to run at? You know, my machine likes about 190. And I know that from lots of use of, and, and you know, and, I just know that. And right now you, you have your machine, your top thread is set for 190 as well. Correct. And what we're using here is we have an Omni 30 Tex wing, or sorry, 30 Tex uh, thread here. It's polyester, and that's what she used before. So I need to adjust this down to 190, so that way I don't have to mess with my top tension at all. So the way to adjust this is come, come on in. When you look at your bobbin case here, you're going to see two screws. You're, and you're going to make the adjustment on the bigger screw. That's what adjusts the tensions on that spring. Now it's the minute adjustments makes a big difference. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit, go into the turn into the left. So get this in here. See if I can right there. And that's probably all I need right there. Just that minute turn. So now when we pull it, I'm a little low now actually. So I'm going to tighten it up back up right there and 190 right there great perfect so you know when i started to quilt tension was a real issue yeah i really had a hard time with it and this was one of the best things i ever purchased to help me with my tension so jason tomorrow i have a quilt on and i want to use my signature cotton thread so you've been using a poly that's mm -hmm. what we tested it with so i'm going to change to a cotton thread mm -hmm. and let's see what happens when we test a cotton thread let me get this out for you okay thank you i appreciate that there you are okay and i'm going to go ahead and load it so that it pulls clockwise just like jason told us down through the slot under the tension arm take the notch and line those up hear the click load my tensioner gauge and i'm going to pull and as you can see <laughs> it changed it's actually a little bit tighter, right? There we go. It's You'd have little... to use your time if I wasn't here and you could actually pull your arm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You stay right here. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. It's a little tighter than I want it. So I'm just a little tiny movement in that larger screw. And then I can re-evaluate and pull. And sure enough, I'm right at 190. And because the top of our machine is set at 190, then I shouldn't have to make very many adjustments or any at all on the yeah. top of my machine. But you know what, Jason? I found this bobbin case, and it was in the back of my quilting drawer. So I want to go ahead and I want to test it and see how it's doing. Let's right. do that. And while you get that ready, I'm going to explain what you're looking for in tension numbers here. Okay. All right. So the machine we have is a, it's a Gamma Statler 30-inch head. Uh, 
And what you're looking for on the 22 inch up to the 36 inches, so that's 22, 26, 30, and 36, you're looking for a number between 180 and 220. And you're going to get to know your machine. You're going to know that number exactly. Yeah. Um, and if you have an 18 inch machine, you're going to be looking anywhere from 250 up to 300 as, as those numbers that you're looking for. So Right. Tinch is not one spot. No. It's a it's a, an average, right? No. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and test this and let's see what happens. Oh, whoa, look at that. Something's going on here. Let's try that again. So, so my gauge is flipping back and forth. So Jason, what does that mean? So what this means is that you have a problem somewhere in this mechan mechanism. Could be your bobbin. Could have a badly run bobbin. Could be your bobbin case. Could be your backlash spring. There's a lot of things in here that could be the problem. Oh, I see the problem. My bobbin case is bent. So that actually helped me know that I had a problem before I put this in my machine, because had I put this in my machine and started stitching, I would have got some pretty bad tension. And that means I had to start unpicking. And you know how I feel about unpicking, right? Oh, yeah, you yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, I, want, I want to be a better quilter than a, a, a good picker. I want right? to be a better quilter. So, so not only can I test my tension with this gauge, but I can make sure that I have a healthy bobbin and a healthy bobbin case. Yep. Right. And one other thing that I really like about this case, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take your bad... Wait, that's a bad one. So, you know, a lot of people will call us sometimes and say, I'm having a problem with my tension. Mm -hmm. It happens with us as dealers all the time. We love to help everyone that, that calls us. Right. Um, and they're like, you know, I get my bobbin, I put it in here, and when I pull it up, you know, it's doing about right on my hand. But I can't see that on the phone, right? Yeah. I have no idea what that looks like over the phone. But if they had a tension gauge and they could tell me what number it was at, that would help me to set, help them set their tension on the machine, right? Yeah, and it also helps us tell them, hey, the tension could be in the bottom or it could be in the top. But if, without this gauge, we can't really help diagnose that over the phone. It makes it harder. So you can pick up a toe tension gauge from your local dealer, or you can go on our long arm store. It's called longarmstore.com, and we'll go ahead and ship one out to you. And like I said, this was the best tool I ever bought when yep. I first started. So everyone, happy quilting. Stay safe. Yep. And one last thing I want to add. Okay. Um, when we switched from the polyester to the cotton, it made sense that it changed poly to cotton. Cotton drags more, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing I like to do as well is pick up an extra one of these toe cases, okay? And then you can say, okay, this toe case is for my cotton threads, and this toe case is going to be for my polyesters and then all you ever have to do is put it in check it and you shouldn't really have to make many, many adjustments after that right. as long as you keep them with the right thread brand but <laughs> yep and when you brought that up i like multiple bobbin cases because when i do custom quilts i change my thread colors i love to do that because you hopefully only quilt a quilt once yeah. right <laughs> and so i like to change my colors so i'll have a bobbin case for every color and mm -hmm. i set it in my toa each color and then all i have to do just pop that in and out, that bottom case in and out, and change my top thread. Makes it very simple, yep. and my tension stays consistent. Yeah, yeah so, that, when that bottom's consistent, the top will stay consistent with it, and you're yeah, good to go. That's right. Okay. So, do we have any questions? Is there any comments? <laughs> Looks like our reader is saying there's no comment. So no questions, but lots of highs from all over. Hope you guys are being safe. We Thank are. You. We're quarantined here in the house today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So yeah. we hope you all stay safe and that you enjoy your quilted machines. Give your dealers a call if you need help. We are more oh, than happy to help Oh, we have one question you. here. Sure, go ahead. Jana asked, when you use the TOA, shouldn't it be laying flat on the table and not in your hands? I have never been taught that, but if you feel that the, you've been taught that, then yes, go ahead, Janet, and do that. There's no reason that that's not a bad thing to do or a wrong thing. So go ahead. Yeah. And, and if it makes it easier to get those nice smooth poles, it works great. Right. Yep. Any other questions before we go? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.